Welcome to the second episode of Building a Model Airport. If you haven't seen the first episode, be sure to check that one out because there I explain how to start step by step from scratch. And here you can see how I painted the base plate. Now starting the second episode, we're going to the store to get some paint. In the Stitch Hardware store, you could get all sorts and colors of paint. And I chose three tints of gray and I bought a test 100 milliliter package. 100 milliliters is more than enough and they cost only 3 euros 50 per can so I thought it was a great deal. And for the rest what we're going to use this episode is some paint brushes. Both small paint brushes for the details and bigger for the surface are needed. Next you need frog paint or any kind of painter tape. I am also going to use paint pens from Unipasca. I use two sizes of pens. This one is the PC3M size. This has the perfect thickness for most of the markings on the airport and for the white paint pen I use the PC1M that's a bit smaller and perfect for for example all the roads. We're also going to use modeling grass I will put a link in the description where you can buy it and with that you need some glue to stick it down the airport and I use this very sharp knife as well. I have got a small box I will put a link in the description to this as well. So starting off we are going to paint. Uh, this is some paint I had from my previous airport and it's very old so I had barely enough but I got some paint left in the bottom so I scraped that out and we're gonna use this for a part of my airport. We're gonna make a square in here I'm just measuring out how big the square is gonna be and then I mask that square as you can see over here and we can start painting. Because the paint was quite old, I had, as you can see over here, pieces in the paint, hard pieces. Uh, they were really annoying. I had to get them out of the paint the whole time. Um, so it took a while, but in the end, I was quite happy with the end result. Here you can see very satisfying the removal of the masking tape. And the square looks good. So I let it dry for some time. And then I moved on to the paint that I have just bought from the hardware store. I got three different tints of gray. And I figured I just used two of the three so I had some paper with the color of the paint so I could have a look which color I'm gonna use where. So I chose two tints of gray and then I could start masking out everything so I could start painting the rest of the airport. Applying the masking tape was a bit difficult sometimes because it was hard to get it in a perfectly straight line but after some tries I got it. Here you can see me using the sharp knife to cut off a nice edge so you get a smooth paint layer without any weird hiccups from the masking tape. So I got that off and then it was ready to paint. So before I started painting I made sure the surface was clean and I could start painting then. But I forgot one important thing because in the last episode we made a sketch on the wooden plate of how the airport was going to look like. And I spent really a much time doing that. But I realized that I'm having to paint over it again. Which meant that all my measuring work and hard sketching work was covered under the paint. Which wasn't really handy but there's nothing to do about it. Here you can see the satisfying removal of the masking tape which worked excellent as long as you stick it down well onto the wooden plate so no paint can go underneath it. And here you can see the first tint of grey or the second tint I should actually say uh, being applied. I was very happy with the color and as you can see when you look close by you can still kind of see the markings of the sketch that I made before in the previous episode. But it's kind of hard to see, so that's a shame, but we'll move on. I placed the masking tape for the last part of the paint and here I painted it and I was very happy with the color as well. Once again the removal of the masking tape. After this removal I let it dry for about 6 hours time, so it was dry enough to start working on it again. And what I tried was before painting with a sharp knife I went over the sketch but it didn't really work so all the sketching was lost. But moving on to the painting of the markings, here you can see me using an airbrush for at least a white paint because what I found out was that my white Uniposca paint pen wasn't really functioning well so I opted I'd go for the airbrush for at least all the white paint. Um, this doesn't mean that you need an airbrush as well because I believe with the white Unipasca marker PC1M 
you will get the same result, but my marker didn't work very well. So that's why I chose to use the airbrush. It took a lot more time and work because I had to use the masking tape in order to get the lines good. But as you can see, it all looked well. So what I am painting here are the outlines of the road that's going to run around all the airplane stands. And I actually made a mistake during the sketching and this mistake I took over in the painting because as you can see there was a line running too far. And then I also did the same thing for the line behind the airplane which marked the other side of the ramp. And this way I marked out where the planes could stand so I could move on with the red markings. I'm not an expert at this, but the red markings, I think, mark where you can and cannot stand when the airplane is, for example, going to push back. So it's kind of a safe zone. And here you can see me using the red paint pen of Uniposca on the PC3M. And I used a wooden stick as a ruler and it worked well. And the benefit of these paint pens is that it is very quickly dried up, like in five minutes your paint is dry and you can start with the next thing again. So here I'm going to draw the yellow line which marks where the plane is going to taxi over and how it positions at the gate. So here you can see me measuring out everything once again and then testing it with the plane if it fits and I want to fit a pushback truck in front which perfectly fits. So here I'm drawing the yellow line. And all of this footage is sped up, but I'd really advise you if you're building your airport, really take your time to do this securely. Do not make any mistakes. You can make mistakes, you can correct them, but it's just wasted time. So after adding the yellow lines to each and every gate, this is what it looked like. And it's already getting much more the shape of an actual airport. And now we keep using the yellow paint pen in order to make the taxiway marking. So here I'm putting the planes so they have enough space on the left and the right to not hit anything and not be close by to the planes parked at the gate. And I use the modeling grass, which is going to be on the other side of the taxiway in order to visualize how it's going to look like. And after I was happy and measured everything out, I started painting the taxiway lines. As you can see here in the turn, I don't make straight lines, but I make them a bit curved because this is also on real life airports and it looks better. And after you've made all the yellow lines, it's time to outline them with a very thin black fine liner. And this is a paint pen as well. And here you can see me using it at the gate, marking the end where the plane is going to come to a standstill. And now on the side of the taxiway, I made these yellow lines which are perpendicular to the taxiway sideline and they are two centimeters long and they are often seen at many airports and I don't exactly know what they do or what they mean but I just think it looked better so I made those and after making the lines and outlining them with the black paint pen the airport really started to take shape so here I made the red line a bit longer to mark the sides of every gate stand and now we're going to move on to the road again. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm making a mold for my airbrush, which I'm going to use for the dotted road markings. And here you can see me painting them. And if you have any comments on how I use my airbrush, please leave them below because I, this is the second time I used it. But as you can see, I'm happy with the result. Here and there I spilled some paint or made a mistake and that's perfectly fine. I'm going to work that away later. But for now, after adding all the markings, this is what the airport looks like. And it's already taking much more shape. And that is really awesome to see. So after all the markings have been finished, I am creating these concrete tiles of 2 by 2 centimeters. And I'm using a normal pencil here with a ruler, making sure all the lines are straight. And as you can see, that looks absolutely awesome. And the fun thing is using a pencil and a bit of a wet hand, if you rub over it, it smears out and some weathering is created. And this is a very easy way to weather your airport. So I started just rubbing over the aircraft stands and it showed some wear and tear on the airport, which I think looks absolutely fabulous. 
So this is what the airport looks like after we've added all the markings. In the video description are two links in which there is everything about airport markings. So be sure to check those out before you start making markings on your own airport. The last thing we're going to do this episode is add a bit of modeling grass. So here I have a square that I'm going to put in the corner of my airport. And first I used some modeling paint, but a standard glue stick worked out to work way better. So I glued the grass on the airport and then I used a sharp knife to cut around the edges and make sure it all looked good. So here I made a round edge, which followed the curvature of the taxiway line. And on the edge of the airport, I could cut it like this. And then after adding the modeling grass, this is what the airport looks like. I put some models on it and as you can see, it looks already absolutely amazing. All of this took me about two full days of work, what we did in this episode. And I'm very happy with the result. I believe there are still some tiny markings missing that we are going to add next episode. And I also need to clean up these mistakes. And what we're also going to do next episode is make a terminal, which is going to place right over there. But that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and let me know if this helped you building your own model airport. Please consider to like and subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video.